Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the R1 Remote Control. This is a VR headset control that uses Bluetooth to connect either to the all-in-one VR device or to your smartphone if you're popping it into a Google Cardboard accessory. So once you're connected, it's a lot easier to navigate around since when you're in that virtual environment, trying to press keys on a phone is nearly impossible, and a lot of more simpler controls just lack the amount of functions that you want to access on screen. So this can be picked up for about 15 bucks on Amazon and through the company's website. Very simple packaging, and in here we have just the remote, which we'll take a closer look at, and there's also a micro USB port for charging. It takes about two hours to completely charge. Afterwards, you can operate it for around uh, seven hours before you need to recharge it again. Here's what the instruction manual looks like. You have uh, some controls, including an analog jog stick and A, B, C, D keys that can be programmed. There's also a micro USB port for charging, a shoulder key, and of course uh, corresponding to what features for iOS or Android is very dependent. So volume keys will do specific things on different phone models. Back is the same instructions printed in English. And in here we have just the control itself. So it's made out of plastic. It's pretty lightweight. Um, you can see that there is this interesting uh, a finger ring at the bottom here that makes it a bit easier to grip so that it doesn't fall loose or accidentally drop to the floor uh, when you're immersed in that uh, virtual environment and you kind of want to grip onto this as a physical sense. Um, the keys themselves are pretty tactile and responsive. They're risen above the surface so they have a nice feedback to them. There's a menu key here. There's also that jock stick which seems to be fairly responsive. Nice and comfortable because it's been cushioned by this soft rubber material on the top here. And uh, the side here features a dedicated power on off switch, turn it on to pair using Bluetooth. There's also a back key located on the very top there, and also what looks like to be a home key. So pretty well thought out, fairly ergonomic, and takes a bit of time to get used to everything. But after you do get used to it, it should be fairly simple to, to navigate and to use. All right, so pairing with a phone is simple enough. You just open up Bluetooth, and then uh, the first time that you power this on, you'll see an LED light here start to flash blue and blink. That means it's in the pairing mode. Um, not everything is set up 100% uh, correctly, depending on the phone that you're using. So you do have to kind of manually reprogram some of these keys, um, you know, as you as you go through some of the games. But for the most part, it does work. So for instance, if I tap on an open drawer and I want to go back. Uh, go back home, tapping on the back key as you can see will definitely do that. Um, adjusting the volume seems to be the default uh, setting for changing the, the jog dial up and down. So if I do that, it's going to change the, the volume. So that's something that's been set up right now as opposed to actually moving around the interface. But once you're in a VR game, it does move around as, to, as opposed to, let's say, changing the volume. So uh, it can be reset and changed and reprogrammed, which is nice to note. Seems pretty responsive. Uh, Bluetooth range is around 10 meters or 33 feet. So as as far as you have a reasonable distance with the phone, it's going to work without any, any problems. Um, afterwards, the keys themselves are pretty tactile, pretty responsive. When I tried popping this into a cardboard accessory and using it as a tr traditional VR, um, without looking at the remote, I still found it to be pretty comfortable and easy to use after a few seconds, and I was able to kind of navigate around the virtual world without any too many hiccups or problems. When you're outside of VR and you're just in the main menu, when you first pair it, you can also play pause music using this so you can act as kind of a music player of sorts by playing and pausing your music. Overall, I would say that this is a pretty good VR remote control if you are looking for a low-cost solution for Android or iOS devices. It does work fairly well as far as the reception and battery life is concerned. I like the fact that it has this extra handle that makes it slightly easier to grip and access some of the shoulder keys on the very top. Not everything is completely set up perfectly and calibrated perfectly right when you take it out of the packaging, so it does take a little bit of time to kind of get used to um, at first. And you know, compared to lower-cost remotes that only have maybe the shock dial without any of the extra keys, um, it does add a, a bit of extra functionality if you want to, if you're a more advanced user and you want to program those functions. Anyways, that's been our video. You can check out more details in our upcoming official written review. But for now, uh, thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the R1 Remote Control VR.